Good afternoon, everybody. Oops, sorry, I'm just trying to adjust my phone. Get everything in the shot. Do the things. You know what I don't have here? Oh, I don't know. I don't need that. I don't need that. I don't need that. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Diane. Joanne and Diane are here. Love that. Just refreshing my tablet. So this is the last, last live Facebook of the week. It has been a great week. It's also been a very long week. It's been, it's been a lot. It's been some very long days, seven days for an online show. Um, and it is, is a lot. There's a lot going on behind the scenes here. Um, holy moly, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. And there's a lot of orders that have been packed. There are a lot of... Hello, girls. Hello, Karen Richardson. There are a lot of orders that have been packed. There's lots of all sorts going on here. And lots of packing, lots of unpacking. I just got that... <laughs> Hello, Sharon. Um, I just We just received a DHL order on a Sunday, which is amazing. If I knew that he was out the front, I could have kissed him. So make sure you jump online because the items that came in are a restock of Art by Marlene, a restock of Dina Wakeley, the brand new Stamping Bella, um, stamps, which are great, the new Christmas ones, um, and Distress oxides. Distress oxides came in as well. Um, a restock of those. And I thought I was organised, but I'm not. Here we go. Um, oh, and thank you, girls. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed my last art journal page. I really enjoyed doing that one. That one was a little bit fun. So what I thought I would do this time is a scrapbook layout using... The Lindy's Gang Magicals uh, and a few stamps. Um, I was going to crack open another packet of paper, but I have established that every time I open a pack of paper, it sells out quickly and I haven't got much left, like something with lots and lots and lots and lots on it. So I figured I would just do something with some marshmallow cardstock, some ultra new stamps, some Natalie May scrapbooking stamps and the Mountain Meadows Lindy's Flat Magicals. Now, I've got a bit of an idea on what I would like to do. I've got some inspiration here next to me and I think that I want to create something nice and bright. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so the Mountain Meadows. These are the Flat Magicals. So these are the ones that have no shimmer in them. So we have got Foxglove Fuchsia, Wild Rouge Rose, sorry, Wild Rose Rouge, because that was close, Stormy Sky, Mountain Meadows Green and Evergreen Emerald. So what I'm going to do is make up a little wash of these colours and I'm going to just do something really, really simple today because it is the last one of the show and I'm a little brain dead. I was just saying to um, Trevor when I went inside that uh, it's been a really long week, uh, but I think what's been worse is, be well, not so much worse, but I think it's been because I haven't really left the house either. Um, two trips to the gym and uh, 15 minutes in a supermarket. Uh, I can certainly sympathise with those of you in Victoria. Um, it's, it's been a lot this week. So 
and I know it's only been a week and I need to shut my mouth because you guys have been doing it a lot tougher and um, we appreciate that. But yes, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to, to go and spend an afternoon sitting in a park. Um, okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just using my Nuvo spoon here to dig out a little of each of the colours. Um, the Nuvo spoon uh, earlier this week on my tools, tools my favourite tools section, um, I talked about my, my Nuvo spoon and how it's one of my well used spoons. So you can see how much I'm putting in of each of these colours, not a whole lot. Uh, just off camera here, I have got some clean water. That's almost coming out of the bottle. Hang on. There we go. All right, so just off camera, I've got some water and I'm just using a pipette. So this is just fancy Adelaide water. <laughs> <laughs> Said nobody ever. And I'm just gently squeezing it into here. So now I have got these amazing little watercolour almost like watercolour, but they are pigment. Well, they're, they're little dyes. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to test those colours. Um, always test. Always test um, first. So using a wet paintbrush, wet clean paintbrush, putting it in, giving it a little bit of a stir around. I need to make sure that before I put it onto my page, I know what I'm playing with. So that one is probably my favorite actually, that lovely one there. So this set is the Mountain Meadows Magical set. They are a set of five and they are the ones without the shimmer. And I think these are amazing. This set was actually designed by um, Aga from AB Studios and they coordinate beautifully with her paper range as well. So let me just bring that up to camera. And you can see how bright and vibrant that is. So that'll give you a bit of an idea on what I'm planning, what I'm planning on doing with this scrapbook layout. So I'm just gonna slide those off to the side. I want to create some decorative strips that I'm going to stamp on and cut. So not too many, maybe a, a couple of each colour. Um, and I'm really, and I'm just thinking, I'm just going to rule some lines. So this little layout that I'm doing would be amazing if I had a whole heap of pattern paper. Um, and I could do exactly the same thing. But I love the idea of creating my own patterned papers. Uh, and that's where the Lindy's Magicals are going to come into play this time. So I'm just going to do this down here. Just giving me a loose guide. And whoops. I want to use a bit of a wider paintbrush this time. So the one that I used in my last layer of uh, my last page, uh, my last, sorry, art journal page. Um, so the powders are the Lindy's Gang Magical. So they are a pigment dye based powder, which means that they, the pigment means that they are full of color. The dye means that they are permanent. And the powder means that you need to activate them to get the magic to happen. So you can activate them with anything. You can activate them with any sort of, any sort of liquid to get those happening. Um, the Lindy's powders have been around for, or the Lindy's products have been around for over 24 years. They are not a new company on the market. But, but they are a very well-known, very well-respected company. And I think that that's really important when it comes to buying products and products that you know have got longevity and that are going to work. So that is what we are using here. 
So they're not watercolour powders. Watercolour powders won't stain the paper like these will. Um, watercolour powders will reactivate if I accidentally tip my glass of wine over it or my cup of coffee. Um, but these are a dye. It also means that if I accidentally leant over it and dipped my boobs in it, then it's going to be a permanent addition to my boobs. Okay, so they are a permanent product. So just layering on the colour here, and it's this is just plain Kaisercraft cardstock. It is far from fancy. It's quite thin and it's soaking in the colour really, really quickly. Uh, I'm just going to go back now and add, and add another layer. So that I've got different layers of the same colour. And when I bring this up to camera in a minute, you're going to see what I mean. So for those of you just tuning in, welcome, welcome. I am creating a, a scrapbook page today using the Lindy's Gang Magicals. And... I just want something a bit darker now. Whoops, was that the wrong colour that I just picked up? Bugger. Um, yes, the Lindy's Gang Magicals and instead of using patterns paper. So rather than me opening up a packet of pa pattern paper out of the shop that you will then all want 15 minutes later, I figured, you know what? I'm going to make my own pattern paper and I'm going to show you how to create a page that then you that you can then create using pattern paper. So you can create this same layout using pattern paper, but just obviously skipping this step. And I'm just rinsing my brush off camera. So you guys have been like super busy. Um, ordering up a storm over the last few days. Thank you very much for that. Today is Celebration Sunday. So the last day of the show, meaning that I am going to give back to all of you and you can get all the specials that I had on during the week, the single one day specials. I am um, opening up again for two today as well so that you can um, take advantage of those one more time. So make sure that you jump online. A whole heap of brand new stuff has just walked in today. Um, the DHL man delivered on a Sunday, which I, if I knew he was out the front, I would have just about kissed him, I can tell you. Um, okay, paper towel. I put a roll of paper towel down somewhere safe. Can anybody see it? There we go. So I need to dry this off quickly before I do the next step. So all of the Lindy's powders and this entire set, which is the Mountain Meadows, they are currently 15% off until the end of today. So as part of the sale, they are 15% off. So good opportunity to grab those. I know, isn't that a gorgeous colour combination? I just think they are so pretty. And I love that, you know, these are some masculine colours and these are some lovely feminine colours and they all just go together really, really nicely. And they're super vibrant. So the other cool thing about the Lindy's Magicals is because you are making up your own washes of colour, you can decide how strong those colours are going to be. So that means that if you want them to be really, really bright, you add more powder. If you don't want them super bright and you're after something a lot more muted and a lot more and a lot lower in um, pigment, then you add more water. You can mix them with white paint. You can mix them like to make up a paint. You can mix them with hand sanitizer to make a bit of an alcohol ink. Not a true alcohol ink, of course, but a bit of a something that resembles an alcohol ink. 
you can mix them with modeling paste to make a colored modeling paste. So you don't need to anymore buy modeling paste in, in like a million different colors. Why, why should you bother doing that? You'd be much, much better using a product such as this, this great little pigment powder that will have many, many different uses, okay? So I'm just used my heat gun and because I am absolutely over it, I'm just going to take the puddles off. But it is a dye, so it is dyeing the paper. And it also means that if I was to dip my hands in it and my boobs and my t-shirt or whatever else, it's also going to dye my, my fabric and my fingers. So what I want to do is I'm just going to cut these up quickly. I'm doing an order this week for these Tim Holtz shears as well, hoping that they, they're in stock. I thought that they were going to be in the delivery that just walked through the door, but they weren't. So if you do want a pair, please send me a private message and I can put you in the order book for them. Um, they're not something that I would normally get in, but they are something that I'm more than happy to a customer order. Okay, so what I would like to do now is I want to add a few patterns of stamps to this. Uh, I just want to keep it really simple. So I'm using black archival ink. because it is permanent and I haven't decided if I am 100% finished with adding colour. So I always use black, ar black archival ink and I'm going to use the Natalie May stamps. So the stamps that I have designed to add some pattern. So I'm not using the, an acrylic block because I'm lazy mostly. Um, Instead of stamping, instead of what, having a, a black, I don't want a super black stamp. What I do want is a piece of scrap paper. And I want to off stamp first. So I want to take the darkest amount off onto there and then I want to stamp onto there so that it's not super dark. I don't have any grey ink handy. So by off stamping and stamping the, the darkest part onto a piece of scrap paper, it's actually making it a really light shade of stamping. I'll bring it up to camera in a moment for you to see. And I don't want it to be perfect either, okay? So that is the look that I am after. I'm creating my own on my own pattern paper. All right, so there's one. I'm going to use the off the grid stamp as well and do exactly the same thing. So take the bulk of the ink off onto the scrap paper and then do that. So then that way I'm getting this broken stamped image and it looks a lot more like patterned paper. All right, so there's another one done. Um, I'm gonna use some words as well. So I'm going to use my blah, blah, blah stamp. So stamping that, the worst of it off onto the white paper. Then the rest onto there so that I've got a nice grey tone.
See how that's a bit softer? I think that that just is, um, it's not as bold. I've got a lot of boldness already on this and I don't want a whole lot more. So I'm going to do the same thing here with the original art one. So stamping. Now this one is a lot harder to see and I'm just going to make it just a fraction darker by not off stamping it because it's such a bold blue. So you can use your, your, your stamps that you've been hoarding at home because I know that's what we do uh, to create so you can see that there but you can create your own pattern paper okay and it's all from one piece of cardstock so far um the last one is this one what do we got here this gorgeous little one from uh what set's that from the don't overthink set so the, the, these are the stamps, the only stamps that are not on special this week. And that is because I these are my personal designs and that they are already at their lowest possible price. Um, I can't do them any cheaper than what they currently are online, okay? So thank you for your understanding with that. And that goes the same with the stencils as well. Alrighty, so I'm just going to pop those stamps to the side, close my ink pad off, and let's have a look at my layout. Um, actually, before I do that, what I might do is I thought I would have a go at stamping a few little flowery images. Um, I'll stamp those and colour those first, and then we'll start putting together these elements. So this is the Beautiful Day stamp set from Ultra New, and this is one of the, the Builder Stamp, Builder Flower collections, so that you can, you can see exactly what you need to do here. You can see how you do colour one, colour two, colour three, colour four. If you are stamping with four different colour ink pads, you're going to build a beautiful flower. Um, I love that idea, um, but I just want to use this one to start with. Thank you, Louise. And I'm going to use the Reeves Heavy Drawing Pad to stamp onto. So I've got an acrylic block, the black archival ink again, because I might colour some of these, some of these flowers, um, I need to make sure that I use the black archival ink. Otherwise, I'm going to lose the integrity of my image when I add the colour. So that is gorgeous. Look at that. So I'm just going to stamp some of those. So some of the other stamps that I have available online that might suit this style that I'm doing here. Um, let's have a look and see what else I found. Oh, this one was beautiful. This, this is the Wild and Free set. Um, and this one, sorry about the reflection. Uh, this one has got... Bird, uh, words and butterflies, leaves, all sorts of these really gorgeous little elements. So they would look great. And the extremely highly sought after Vicky Booten set. So this set has actually got the dies that go with them at, in, included on a magnet. So um, that one's a bit of a bargain. So I've got two different sorts of Vicky Booten stamp sets online at the moment. All right. So I have got those ready to go. Got that ready to go. So let's pull out my cardstock. So what I'm thinking 
is that I want to have my photo in the middle. So let's just say for argument's sake, this is my photograph. I don't have a photo handy at present. Uh, I'm gonna pull out my trimmer and just check the measurements. So this is a little bit over three and a half by a little bit over five and a half. And that's around the standard size of photos that I would normally use. Um, I tend to trim things down fairly well. So I want mine to go about there. The cardstock in my background is marshmallow cardstock. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to have strips that go through the middle that I'm going to tear. Before I do that though, I think it's really important to map my photo, my pretend photo. So instead of using a patterned paper, which I just don't have handy, I'm going to use the piece of paper here that I had for um, stamping on. So I'm going to grab my paintbrush and I'm going to make my own patterned, my own photo mat. Uh, let's go with maybe this colour. I'm going to make my own paper for the photo mat and show you how I do that. So I'm just gonna paint that up. In fact, I'm gonna mix those two colors together. Give it a quick heat set. So the, um, the Reeves heavy drawing paper is what I use for stamping on. Uh, when I'm wanting to add stamped elements to my cards. It's a A4 pad of paper, 200 GSM white paper. Uh, it's lovely to stamp onto. Uh, I think the pad is 25 sheets in a pad and really, really nice. It dries quite quickly as well and the colour shows up nice and true. And that's really important when you're stamping elements. So because I, this is what I had handy, we'll use that. Just take those, any extra dampness out. Pop that aside so I don't knock it over for the 13th time. And cut strips. What is she doing? You are all asking. This is what, when I am a little bit short on patterned paper, and I need to mat my photo, this is what I do. Got my double-sided tape and I'm going to tape edge to edge all the way around. Not with that one, here we go, this one. Uh, because what I will do is I'm gonna pop these strips on the back. Um, this is a really, really good way of being frugal with your paper and using up odd bits that you've got left over. So this is my, 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 my photograph. And I don't care that it's not straight. I much prefer it's not straight. The plan that I have for this whole layout None of it is straight anyway. I'm going to be tearing paper in a moment, which is going to put a few of you in the fetal position, but it's going to work. So now I've matted my photo with a pink edge, okay? Nice and simple, and the pink is exactly the same as what I've already created with my pieces on the side here. So that to me is important. Um, instead of using 
foam tape. I'm going to use a piece of cardboard that uh, I've got a lot of cardboard boxes I'm trying to get rid of at the moment. So um, a piece of cardboard is a sustainable option and it is giving my scrapbook layout, uh, giving the photograph some body as well. So when I'm scrapbooking, and I was talking about this yesterday, when I'm scrapbooking, I always work from my photo down because that is what we are doing. We are scrapbooking and it's all about the photograph, not about all the other crap on the page, for lack of a better term. Sorry. Uh, Louise has just bought me a coffee. Bear with me. Mm. That's better. Where can I put that? Reached I've reached the coffee stage of the day. All right. So what I want to do here, here is my photo. I don't want to stick anything down because I want to add a little bit of watercolour into my background. But I want to put my photo, I'm going to go with a vertical photo. And I want to take some of these elements here and I'm just going to tear them down. Tear those babies down. So my, my handmade paper with my pattern on it is going to run across my page. And I'm just going to keep it simple and layer these guys up. And I'm, I'm tearing pretty slowly here, guys. I'm not, I'm not just ripping it like I don't care. I'm just, I'm trying to get them all very similar. And I don't know how many of these strips I'm going to use yet. So so this would be amazing if you have got pattern paper all from the same collection, four or five pieces or some half scraps left over. Um, really, really great technique, easy layout to do. All right, what a mess. But... You know what? I'm just going to whack this paper down, I've decided. I'm not going to think about this too much. And I'm just going to... I was going to do the, the painty bit on the background first, but I'm not going to. Nope. I'm just going to commit to it. Pop some tape on. About there, there and there. And hope to, to heavens that that's about right. I'm going to take these strips now. Going to take them and layer them up. I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up. And I'm only exposed the tape on this side. So then I've got a bit of wiggle room. Bit of wiggle room, as we like to say. Like that. That works. Not a new technique. Not, a, not an original technique but it is something that we forget to do. Oh, look at that. I got really clever with that, I think. What do I, which one am I missing? That one. All right, so now I can stick this bottom section down. Always work from the bottom. So these would look great if I ran them through the sewing machine as well. Um, adding some stitches to stitch each individual element down would look amazing. Uh, I really 
would love to have had the time to do that today and have got the, the sewing machine out to do that. Um, this bit across the top here, which I don't love, I'm going to add this, which one? Which one, which one, which one? I might add a little bit more of this one here, but I don't want the white showing, so I want to back tear it, meaning I'm, meaning I'm tearing away from me rather than tearing towards me on my leading hand so that I don't have the white showing, okay? Now, if I had a clean finger, oh, I should be able to just roll that excess tape back. I don't have very clean hands at the moment. But that's going to work. Ah, happy. Okay. That needs double-sided tape. So don't forget one of uh, the one of the you lucky ladies who has ordered and gentlemen actually who have ordered over the last couple of or the last few days. Um, one of you will receive in your order the art canvas that I created live a few days ago. Uh, so I'm not going to tell you who has gonna who's gonna get that in their order. It is just going to be pop, popped in with one one particular order. Um, and I'm not even going to choose that. Louise is going to choose that. She's packing orders at the moment. So uh, that will go in with a customer order tomorrow and Tuesday. So keep an eye out. And if you do happen to have that one popped into your order, I look forward to you guys sharing it with me. Or you sharing it with me on, on Facebook. And letting me know. All right, so I'm on the right track here. But what I think it's missing is I need a little bit of a, a colour wash up here and down here. And I don't think that it stands out enough. So it's also going to need a bit more white around it. Here's a scrap of white from earlier. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing and pop some white behind it like that. And use that excess scrap bit. And I'm more than happy just to expose that off like that <laughs> um, and stick that there oh and it's a bit short but that's okay I don't mind because it is creative and I might stick a flower in that corner. In fact, I will stick a flower and that stands out better. So I need to add a bit more. I'm gonna add some, um, a wash of color now. So to do that, I'm gonna pencil mark where my, where my photo is going to go. So I've got a bit of a guide. And I, can, I know on my page where my boundary is. This is really important for me. I find that this is something that I do a bit so that I can work with what, that you know, but only put the colour where I need to put it. Um, I'm swapping sides and I'm going to use my paper towel to cover a few little areas here because I don't want all of my white to be completely covered in ink and I tend to be a little bit messy. 
My The reason I'm doing it on this side is because my water container is on this side as well. This paintbrush is the wrong one to use. I need something that is a little bit more soft and a bit more flexible. So I've got this one here, which has got, uh, got a lot bigger trigger, trigger, a lot bigger brush. Gosh, my, I'd need more coffee. My words are not working. My words are sounding great in my head. They're not really translating to my mouth. Coffee. Okay. So I want to make a wash this time. So I want to add a, a little bit of a, a wash going on and around here. I think I've used enough of this colour already. So my second favourite colour to use is one of these blues. If I was to put it straight onto my page, it's going to be a lot. It's a lot going on here. So instead, I'm going to tone that back and tone it down. Let me just try this other lovely, beautiful emerald first. Well, maybe I like that one better. I think I like that one better. So the other thing that I can do is so I've got another well here that I haven't used. So I'm going to just clean that out with a little baby wipe. Hello, Tina. And hello, who is that just tuning in? Oh, Janine, I see you. And Janine, you popped in the other day and I didn't realise it was your birthday. Happy birthday, my friend. So what I'm doing here is I'm making a toned down version of this green. So this is where my photo is going to go and I want to work outside that edge. So if I go in here first, I can then move out in this area, all right? Just like that. So I can take the excess off into here and then push it up. And what by pushing it up allows me to move it around a little bit, okay? So I'm not doing that because I don't want pointy bits. I'm making round motions and I'm also using a lot of just a wet paintbrush what I call dirty water dirty paint water can be your friend okay so I'm spreading it out into a wash rather than a a solid amount of color and in a minute I'm going to add a few splatters as well okay and you can see the bulk of it is in under here and then I'm pushing it, and this is where my photograph is going to go. And I've just gone in with a bit more of this other blue and adding just a few dobs of that around for uh, a little bit of interest. And what's going to happen is that's going to dry with a different sort of layer. It's going to bloom and dry with a mixed up colour of this blue and green, which is exactly what I'm chasing, exactly the look I want. So while that is taking a moment to dry, I'm going to grab my paper towel, just soak off any excess and quickly hit it with the heat gun. The, the cardstock that I'm working on for my background is marshmallow cardstock. It is a cardstock that is designed for mixed media. It is a heavier weight. It's about a 220 to 250 GSM and it is designed to hold water. Okay, so it's designed to hold all of these little mixed media elements. So now I'm just grabbing a little bit of this wash and adding some splatters. So it's just a finger tap on top of my brush. Nothing more than that. Um, anybody who used to be a smoker will be splendid at this technique. It is more of an ash flick than it is a... It's not a wrist movement. It's a finger movement, okay? So that's the look that I'm going for. When I put my photo on... That's what I've got. And I've still got flowers to go on too, remember? So 
they're going to still happen. All right, so we've done a fair bit during this time, but I'm gonna just whip through this bottom bit as well and do it at break speed, breakneck speed as they like to call it, rather than explaining the whole process. And drying that off. It's a really good coffee. It's good. It's a great coffee. <laughs> Didn't realise how badly I needed the coffee. So if you don't have a heat tool, I highly recommend investing one. Investing in one, they are essential for creating with any sort of mixed media elements um, to speed up your drying time. Because nobody's got time to sit around and watch paint dry. Life's too short to watch paint dry. So I'm on the right track here. I'm just gonna pop that, side, pop that aside to air dry, have a look at these flowers that I stamped earlier and do exactly the same thing. So these are the ultra new flowers from the Beautiful Day stamp set. And I want to add this color. I think this color's nice. So I can make this, because I'm using the Magicals, I can make this as light or as dark as I want just by adding water. So it's not watercolour paper, which is why I'm moving quite quickly. And I'm not going right to the edges. I'm going to drop in a little bit of that Wild Rose Rouge, which I don't want to say too many times. Okay, so you can see how you can get that really lovely watercolored look. But it's designed to be a nice loose technique and that's exactly what I want. I didn't want to use something, I don't want to be, I don't want to color it into perfection. I want to color it in like I've colored it in and nothing about what I do is perfect. I tend to do things that are a lot more loose and a lot more relaxed because that's the way that I like to create. That's what suits my style better. But if you're perfect and you, sorry, if you're a perfectionist and you like to colour things perfectly, then I, hey, take a little bit more time to do it. Absolutely. You do you. You're not going to get judged on it by anybody who um, matters to you. Yep, that works for me. So I've got three flowers there. I might just do a couple more in this colour just because I can't decide which one looks better. But this paper, because it's not a watercolour paper, it's not a mixed media colour paper, you do need to move quite, quite quick with it. Sitting and, and procrastinating around is soaking in 
So it's all, these have almost, they've completely soaked in. There's no movement in there at all. And that's what I liked about this paper. And it's just beautiful to stamp on. But yes, it's, it's not designed for watercoloring by any means, but it's working today. All right, I'm gonna quickly dry that off. No, I'm not because my heat gun's overheated again. I really need to change that heat gun out of that PowerPoint. And I'm just going to cut a couple of these up quickly. Would any of you like to pop on over here and just cut some of these flowers up for me? That would be fantastic. I would love that. So when I'm cutting, I wriggle my, keep my scissors in the same place and wriggle my left hand. Um, there, I think there is a matching die to go with this, but I didn't actually order it in. Um, yep, thanks, Debbie. If you wouldn't mind just popping over, that would be fantastic. Leslie, uh, you can do the red ones. That would be wonderful. Any other takers for cutting for me? <laughs> That's wishful thinking. Lou, can you um, have a look in my other, not that trolley, the other one over next to the gift wrapping desk and see if there's a heat gun right in the bottom, please, that is not bright green. Not this one? No, that's the paint stripper. <laughs> mm. No? Okay, Trevor must have it in the shed because, you know, that's a thing. All right. Yeah. It's only like a... The little baby one? This one? Yeah, I'll have that one. That'd be great. Thank you. I don't know why my heat gun keeps overheating. Mind you, let's be honest, it's fairly well used. I'm sure watching somebody else fussy cut flowers out is the least interesting thing uh, that you guys have done today, but um, I'll give you points for sticking by. That's the one you want to pull out, wherever that one is, thank you. And I think I need a straw to drink my coffee at the same time. Awesome. Thank you. Perfect. Yes, I do think I need to invest in a new heat tool because it is well and truly uh, used, we'll say. Shagged. Shagged. Absolutely done and dusted, I think. I reckon I've gone through... Mind you, they, I get a fair amount of use out of them and they get quite a few years before they kick the bucket. All right, so. But how beautiful is that stamp? I love that. Okay, that's all it needed. Gotta love it. So these flowers, I'm just gonna quickly cut these out and then we will pop this page together. Um, so while I'm doing that, just to recap for the last few hours of the Great Australian Craft Show number seven, we have got 15% off. Today's Celebration Sunday, so I'm just giving you the whole lot. 15% off stamps and stencils today. 15% off of kits today. 15% off Lindy's, which is what we're using right here today. 15% off Christmas. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. Christmas kits, Christmas stamps, Christmas paper, Christmas dyes, Christmas embellishments, Tim Holtz Christmas. So all of the new Tim Holtz stuff that he has released only in the last week that is still available and that is also 15% off. So now is the opportune time 
to grab that. Um, there is also, what else have we got? Paper collections. Photo Play, Stamperia, Minte, AB Studios, Uniquely Creative, <sighs> Paper Rose, um, Simple Stories, Graphic 45, Walked Through the Door Today, um, the brand new Woodland Friends Collection, 12 by 12. There is Tim Holtz Papers as well, Paper Collections, A5 Christmas and uh, the, all the new collections. There's one called Wine O'Clock from Paper Rose. I mean, how could you not want to have that in your life? Um, what else is there? What other brands have I got? P13, I've got, I said Uniquely Creative. I said Minte. Um, what else have we got on special? Dyes, so all dyes. Dyes from Sizzix. Dyes from Paper Rose. Um, the brand new Stamping Bella stamps which arrived through the door today, they are also 15% off. Um, alcohol inks. Oh my gosh, alcohol inks. It's a couple of the colours we've sold out of. Alcohol inks are 15% off. So that means the new metallics, the new glitters, they are all currently available in stock. I may or may not have over-ordered on the alcohol inks, so today is the opportune time to make the most of that. Um, yeah, there you go. So you've got all of those things on special until the end of today, all right? Run. Run. Okie dokie. Back to my layout. Here we go. Got a wet puddle here and now I don't. I've got a wet puddle here and now I don't. So what I want to do now is I want to take my photo and I'm going to lift it up a little bit higher. What time today, Jeanette? I haven't actually decided what time the sale is going to stop. What time do you think the sale should stop? What works for you, Jeanette? I honestly haven't set a time for the sale to finish. Are you going to win Cross Lotto tonight? Is that what we're counting on? Is that... <laughs> Scrap FX. Scrap FX is the other thing that is 15% off. Midnight. Midnight? All right. Let's go with midnight. Okay? I will set the timer for midnight... Adelaide time and keep in mind exactly so Adelaide time it is currently 4 p.m. at the moment so it would be 4 30 on the in the eastern states all right so here's my photo mat I've got no idea what time it is in New Zealand sorry Cherie or Perth, or Perth. sorry Bev All right, so you can see what's going on here, right? We've got this flower, uh, we've got this flower, we've got this photo in the middle. I've matted it with papers that I have designed myself. Keeping it super simple, I'm gonna take these beautiful flowers that I've just colored now, and I'm gonna work with them around my page. I was gonna use just three, but look at them, they're so pretty. Just like that, okay? And you know what? I really love that. Oh, hang on. Or do I? Yeah, I do. I'm not going to put it on that side. I'm going to put it up here. So I'm going to grab my glue and I'm going to stick that down straight away before I change my mind. Okay? Look at that. Straight on there with the glue. So this is using the Ultra New Stamps that we have just coloured. And you, this would look really great with the Vicky Booten stamps. This would look really great with the other Ultra New stamps that I showed you earlier. Um, this would look amazing with embellishments. It's a simple design. Instead of making your own pattern papers like I've done here, 
There's no reason why you couldn't go through your paper collections and tear strips of paper. All right, so the last thing that needs to happen for me on here, because what I like to do always is I love me a doodle. So I'm going to grab a black pen. I'm going to get rid of that because I'm probably going to knock that over in a second. Love me a black pen. And I'm just going to just give it a frame. So the reason why it needs a black doodle frame is because I've got black in my flowers with my stamping. And I have black in my, my, my pretend photo here. We'll have some elements of black in it. Um, I don't want to make a perfectly ruled line because I have got torn, torn elements as well. So if I was to do perfectly straight edges here, it wouldn't look right at all. Nothing else about this page is perfect, so I don't want straight lines. I just need a confident hand to draw a line. The other thing about drawing a, a, a doodle line is it takes away the focus of any papers that are not cut to your version of straight. And I say your version of straight because I, it, you know, it wouldn't bother me either way what's straight or not because it's going in my scrapbook album or, or the cardboard boxes that represent my scrapbook albums at the moment. I mean, you know what? That's a scrapbook layout there. Why wouldn't that work as a design? No reason except for my words in my stamping are upside down. So keeping it super simple. So it does need a title. What could I use as a title? What would be my element for a title? Um, I could use the Getaway Thickers from American Crafts. These are great. Lots of different colours on there that would suit and I could pop some words up here. Or down across here love those I could use these guys because these are the Vicky Bouton puffy stickers um, all of those colors work a treat could you imagine how amazing that color would look sitting on top there fantastic um, something a little bit different I've got these gold ones here these are called Second Avenue gold would look amazing on there introducing in another color would be great especially a metallic like this would look fantastic and these ones have got the most divine shimmer to them they would work um, I've got these Vicky Bouton ones here and I've totally changed my mind and decided it needs something gold so give me just a second I don't have any, well I do, but I can't find them handy, any big words, but I've got this old, I've got this set that was sent to me by mistake and they're gold, but it will give you a bit of an idea. This is a faulty set, but it'll give you a bit of an idea on how it would look with gold alphas. Um, so I'm going to write something amazing. I'm going to write, I don't know, let's just go with, so this is a dud set where they haven't lined <coughs> the, um, the stickers haven't worked properly and they haven't lined up the The, the foiling correctly but that's all right
Um, I mentioned before, if I had a sewing machine, if I had a sewing machine, I would have sewn on all of these elements and created a beautiful stitch line all the way across here, okay? And then st stitched through my letters. So if you are looking for these alphabetic sort of things online, I do have a really good range. I'm a little bit addicted to them um, and I try and keep it super simple with black and whites and neutral tones. Um, I always have white ones, white alphas in stock because white ones you can always colour to be any colour you like with the help of a black or a white pen, a paint pen any sort of pen. Um, I think that having those in your stash is a staple element. Um, and you will find those if you look online and look under embellishments, okay? All right, so just in finishing off, what I have created today is a scrapbook layout using the Flat Magicals Mountain Meadows collection. Um, yeah, Leslie, the gold does make it work, actually. It looks bloody awesome. Every now and again, I surprise myself. Um, okay, so I created these lovely strips here using just plain cardstock, painted them on, and then stamped some patterns on top. They are, these are using the Natalie May scrapbooking stamps. I then tore all of those strips and stuck them down to my page. So you can see all of that stamping on there. I stamped the Beautiful Day Blooms from the Alter New stamp set onto the Reeves Heavy Drawing Paper and I will... And we've cut those out, um, coloured them and cut them out. Matted my photo, so I showed you the really cool trick for matting photos if you don't have enough paper. We added a lovely wash to the background by... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? By making this a little bit lighter. Neutralising? No. I, I don't know. I wasn't listening either. <laughs> um and then we stuck those on there and I used some dodgy gold letters, which uh, you would never receive dodgy ones from me, but these ones would have been much nicer, but I don't want to open yet another packet. So I'll take a photo of this and pop the, uh, the a link to the comments, link in the comments of all the items that we used. Um, so that you can have a bit of a click through and make the most of the last days or last hours of the sale, which we decided not 10 minutes ago to finish at midnight. So jump online to nataliemay.com.au. Thank you so very much for joining me throughout this last seven days uh, and creating or watching me create a little mess in front of you every day um putting up with my waffle and bits and pieces and as a reward today is celebration sunday so that means that the items online in the show special drop down are all 15 percent off so you can utilize that until um till midnight if you have already placed an order thank you very much if you haven't you only need to pay for postage one time. So please add 
$12.50 postage to your order for the first order. Then your second order is only one cent. So you, um, you just select no judgment at the checkout on your second order and I will put all your orders together and we will get them out to you in the next couple of days. If you live locally, you will be contacted to say when your order is ready for pickup. So um, just reading through all of your comments. Thank you so very much to all of you for your love. I feel like I've hung out with all of you for like the last week. Um, I've, I've spoken to more of you more than I've spoken to my husband. So that's pretty funny. Um, oh, I'm just keeping reading through. So you guys are fantastic. So thank you so much. Um, look forward to chatting with you all again soon. Um, wash your hands, kiss your kids, chat to you later.